part four, cognition. We're just real quick look at intuitions, perils, and powers. So our intuition, just as what we have inside of us, feelings that we don't really have to think about, um, the powers of it, the benefits of it, and the perils or the negative detriments uh, associated with it. And so, you know, when we think about things, we can think about things in different ways. And one of the ways that we often rely upon in everyday life is just, you know, we don't really think about it because we're taking shortcuts. And so here's some things to think about. So first, we'll talk about the bad stuff. So here's 12 um, deadly sins, as it were, about intuition. So the first thing is hindsight bias, right? Hindsight bias is looking back on events and then... Uh, falsely saying that we knew it all along, right? This is the we, we knew it all along uh, syndrome, right? And so we don't really, it's not like we're thinking, hey, you know what, let me remember this thing and then I'm going to remember that I knew this all along. It's just something that occurs to us and it's a, it's a fallacy. We don't, we didn't remember it all along. We have this thing called the hindsight bias and we, we think that other people should know what we know and we don't. And so, um, you know, this is uh, the first of 12 uh, sins of intuition. Second is the illusory correlation, and that's uh, intuitively perceiving a relationship where none exists. So, for instance, um, stepping out of the batter's box if you're playing baseball and, uh, you know, tapping your elbow 13 times in a row and making sure you flick your nose four times before you bat is not going to make you hit the ball any better to left field, uh, no matter how much you think it is. That's an illusory correlation. Um, okay, the third one is memory construction. Um, our memories are influenced by a lot of stuff. When we move back to the memory chapter, our moods influence our memory. Um, the misinformation can influence our memory. That right, misinformation is when somebody else talks and gives us bad information, and that in turn changes um, what we thought think about it. Um, we can also create false memories. Remember, memories are kind of like Legos. Um, you throw them in the closet after you've had the experience, and then you have to get them out of the closet and put them all back together. And you don't always put them back together the exact same way as you threw them back in. And how you put them back together, that's how you remember it. And so memory construction, you know, can we can think that, you know, we remember something. If you go back to the memory examples, I give you an example of myself, right? I was 100% sure that I remembered something uh, about what truck you know I ran into or ran into me, and I was completely wrong because I reconstructed that memory incorrectly. Uh, four is the representative and availability heuristic. Uh, these heuristics are we th we think we tend to think we know what we're talking about. Representative heuristic is how well does something match a given prototype. So, and availability heuristic is how available is that idea to our recent past. Um, so if we've seen, right, we say, which is the most dangerous form of traveling? And what do we see on the news? We see airplane crashes and stuff like that. Um, airplane travel is one of the safest forms of travel there is. You're more likely to get struck by lightning than you are to die in an airplane crash. And you're much, much more likely to die in a car crash. But we tend to be scared and whatnot of airplane crashes because they're more of the instances of crashes and whatnot are more available to us because we remember them more easily. Overconfidence, like a homeboy right here. Overconfidence um, is our intuitive assessment that our own knowledge is, um, we're often more confident than we are correct. Um, so we just, you know, think that we're right when we're really not. We think um, we have a better chance of being right than we're, we really are too. So that's it. That can definitely be a problem. Uh, belief perseverance and confirmation bias, you know, the same thing. Um, Beliefs are resilient even after, you know, something discredited. That's the belief, that's belief perseverance. Um, and then confirmation bias is uh, we look for things to confirm what we already believe. Um, so let's keep this going here, try to speed it up a little bit. Framing um, depends on how the issue is posed. So uh, again, in the, one of the videos that I did on framing, I talked about you know, they asked uh, voters in, or polled voters in Michigan, does the state spend too much money, not enough money, or just the right amount of money on uh, the prison system? The first time, you know, like 60% say they spend just the right amount. Uh, then they asked, does, the, does Michigan, sp Michigan spend, or is spending $1.3 or whatever they spend on the prison system too much, too little, or, or just right? And, you know, it almost was flip-flopped. Like 65% says that was too much, right? 
The 1.3 billion was the same in both questions, but how you framed it by actually saying the amount changed, you know, how fast. So we intuitively, right, without thinking about it, um, can change our thinking. Uh, interviewer illusion is we tend to have, place more faith in our gut feelings about something that's actually really um, research shows is is worth it. And you know, this is this also goes back to that. Uh, uh, belief perseverance even after you know I could show you a bunch of studies that show that you know your gut feeling about somebody coming in isn't necessarily always right and you shouldn't always trust it people are still gonna go oh well, my gut's good I'm gonna trust that right so even though I'm telling you this and you can go do research on it you're still gonna believe that your gut is better than it is again there's you go with overconfidence so uh, intuition you know can, can get you into some trouble uh, mispredicting our own feelings mispredicting our own behaviors we tend to think we're going to be happier or we're going to react better than we usually are. And, um, you know, that's not true, usually. Self-serving bias. Um, we basically do things to inflate our own self-esteem. Fundamental attribution error is uh, overly attributing others' behaviors to their own inherent qualities rather than to the power of the situation. And we just intuitively, like, all this stuff is we do it without thinking about it. That's the key here. All right, so let's get some good stuff. Um, so how does intuition help us though, right? So, cause it's good and it's bad. So I just went through a whole bunch of bad stuff to be careful of. And you should go back through that. All those different terms that I just talked about, those are super important for this course, right? You should go back and if you don't, didn't know those terms, you need to go back and either rewatch the videos on where, you, where we found those. And maybe I'll put those in the notes where you can find that stuff. Or you need to, um, you know, look them up on your flashcards or look them up on Wikipedia or whatever, but you need to know all those terms. You should know those terms like I was going through them. You should know them that well if you're going to do well um, on the AP exam. So first of all, good stuff is blind sight. Blind sight is actually this really cool thing where, uh, you know, you can have damage to your occipital lobe and you can actually react to stuff that you actually can't really consciously see, but you'll react to it. So you're, you're have damage and you can't see what's going on over here, but um, research will show you know you'll react to it uh, at a higher percentage than just his chance and we can so it works so we're sensing it somehow but we're not actually seeing it uh, so there's a you know a plus on the uh, intuitions good side we talk about right brain thinking um, split brain people can sometimes uh, display knowledge of stuff that they can't verbalize right so more of our visual spatial stuff goes on in our right brain um, and you can you can demonstrate knowledge of it but you can't visualize you can't articulate it but we can you know show that we know what we're, kind of what we're talking about um, moral intuitive learning um, or uh, this, is, this is actually moral intuition I'm sorry cross out that learning moral intuition intuition moral intuition and that's um, quick gut feelings that so this is like quick gut feelings that um, precede moral reasoning. And a lot of times, you know, when we think, when we're morally going through things, our gut feelings are often correct. Um, automatic processing, <clears throat> we do stuff all the time without thinking about it, right? We just do it. And so that's part of our intuition. Implicit memories, um, again, same type of deal, heuristics. We have these mental shortcuts that we don't think about, so we intuitively pick the right one because we've, you know, we've it's served us well in the past. Um, intuitive expertise. Um, we have this unconscious learning, expert learning, physical genius. So sometimes people are just really good at stuff, and we can't really explain why, right? So it's just they're intuitively good at learning how to play different instruments or what have you. Creativity is intuition, right? Steve Jobs famously, uh, right, Apple famously said creativity is just connecting things when you ask creative people how they did something they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it they just saw something right so <laughs> creativity just kind of happens sometimes like you've seen in a ton of movies I'm sure where people are just like boom and they just have this flashball with I've got it I've got this great idea and right if you ever watch Mad Men um, the television show right Don Draper the protagonist in the show he will just like be thinking and he'll be talking to somebody off course and he'll go, got to go or that's it. And he'll go back and he'll just, he'll just come to him, right? It's an intuition, right? He didn't do anything special. It came to him because, you know, he's a creative person. Um, the wisdom of the body. 
Um, sometimes we have these instant responses that are needed and our brain hasn't even had a chance to process the information and we respond to it, which is kind of crazy. Um, thin slices, we can detect traits for mere seconds of behavior. Like if we're watching something, especially like if you're trained at it, you can watch somebody and know something about them just by, boom, half a second of seeing them react a particular way to something. Um, and then finally, dual attitude system. We have two ways of knowing things, either unconsciously or consciously, and two ways of remembering things, either implicitly or explicitly. And we also have gut level and rational attitude responses. So, I mean, we have three different three different things I described there of how we respond to things and how we learn things. And so, uh, you know, this intuition is, is good and it's bad, and you should go back through these things and kind of rehash and make sure you understand this one. And you understand all these 24 different terms or ideas that I just talked about so that you're uh, well prepared for this unit. But this is a good review for the entire course as well. All right. Thanks. Bye.